Mr. Speaker, yesterday the Rules Committee met and reported a rule for consideration for fiscal year 2015 Omnibus Appropriations Bill. The resolution makes an order a motion offered by the Chair of the Committee on Appropriations that the House concur in the Senate Amendment of H.R. 83 with an amendment consisting of the text of the FY 2015 Omnibus Appropriations Bill. The rule provides 80 minutes of debate, 60 minutes equally divided and controlled by the Chair and Ranking Member of the Committee on Appropriations, and 20 minutes equally divided and controlled by the Chair and Ranking Member of the Committee on Education and Workforce. In addition, the rule provides the Chair of the Committee on Appropriations the authority to insert any exp explanatory information. Finally, the rule provides same-day authority through December 12th, as is customary at the end of session. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to present to this House the culmination of the Appropriations Committee's work for the fiscal year 2015. In this legislation, 11 of the 13 appropriations bills are fully conferenced and fully funded through the end of the fiscal year. However, the Homeland Security Bill is funded under a temporary continuing resolution until February 27th of 2015. Mr. Speaker, I carried the initial rule for consideration of the first two appropriations bills considered in the House back on April 30th of 2014. And I believe the record of the House and the House Appropriations Committee has been good. We considered seven out of 12 appropriations bills <clears throat> on the floor under an open process, considered 11 of 12 appropriations bills in committee. Contrast that to the Senate which was unable to consider even a single appropriations bill on the floor. So I'm proud, Mr. Speaker, of the work we've been able to accomplish. The omnibus legislation abides by all the terms set in the Ryan Murray budget agreement, providing a top-line funding level of $1 trillion and $13 billion. But at the same time, this legislation contains important policies that prevent the government from reaching into the lives of ordinary American citizens. Provisions like those which prevent the Army Corps of Engineers from regulating farm ponds and irrigation di uh, ditches, or provisions like those preventing the federal government from regulating the lead content in ammunition or fishing tackle. This bill contain, uh, maintains the historic pro-life uh, provisions and includes new ones, like requiring Obamacare plans to disclose whether they provide abortion services and countless others. At the same time, this omnibus enacts important common-sense priorities on the direction of this government. It cuts funding for the IRS by over $345 million. Indeed, the IRS has been cut by more than $1.2 billion since 2010. It prohibits the IRS from targeting groups uh, for security based, uh, excuse me, for scrutiny based on their political beliefs. It cuts EPA funding for the fifth consecutive year, bringing staffing to the lowest level since 1989. It implements a government wide prohibition on the painting of portraits. It makes common sense decisions like prohibiting funding for inappropriate videos or conferences that shouldn't be funded by taxpayers in times of surplus, much less in times of deficit. But this legislation doesn't just cut funding from programs. It takes those cuts and reallocates them to programs that are truly in need. For example, it provides $30 billion for the National Institute of Health, an increase over funding from FY14. Uh, enhancing funding for Alzheimer's, cancer, and brain research. It funds the Gabriella Miller Kids First uh, Research Act, a bill I authored with Greg Harper and Eric Cantor at $12.6 million, shifting those dollars from funding political conventions to research into pediatric diseases. It increases the health care and educational funding to some of our poorest and most needy constituents, Native Americans, and it provides funding to deal with crises like those associated with the outbreak of Ebola uh, or the uh, militant activity of ISIL, the Islamic State uh, in the Levant, of Iraq in the Levant. I could go on and on with all the good things included in this bill. However, I'm sure others will speak to those items. I believe it's important to take stock in where we've come 
over the last four years. We've taken an annual budget deficit of $1.4 trillion and lowered it to $468 billion. Still too high, but one of the most rapid, if not the most rapid, declines of the deficit in American history. We've prevented additional burdens and regulations from being foisted upon the American people. Our work is certainly not done. Uh, however, one must always remember appropriations and appropriating is a process. The bureaucratic welfare state built by decades of democratic control cannot be dismantled in a single blow. However, it can be reduced piece by piece, and this legislation does just that. Some of my friends will raise objections to the process where we are left with a frustrating choice between the passage of a large omnibus bill to fund all government or a government shutdown. To my friends, I say that I agree with you, as do my fellow members of the Appropriations Committee. There are some things in this bill I disagree with, and some certainly that I agree with. But I do believe that under regular order, those with different points of view should be able to make their case to the entire House. The House has led by example in this regard. We consider seven different appropriations bill on this floor in an open amendment process, which was passed by all of which were passed by bipartisan majorities. The House uh, would have considered even more appropriations bills had the Senate been willing to consider even a single appropriations bill on the floor. In fact, the last time the Senate passed an individual appropriations bill was November 1st of 2011, more than three years ago. Madam Speaker, this isn't the way to govern. I hope that in the next Congress, the House will have a partner in the Senate which is willing to consider individual appropriations bills in an open process so that we do not have to consider large omnibus packages without the opportunity for amendment. I believe we will, and I believe we will end up with a better product because of it. I'm encouraged by the work of my friend Chairman Rogers and Ranking Member Nita Lowy and look forward to working with them and a new Senate next year to build upon the work we've done this year. I urge support for the rule and the underlying legislation, and I reserve the balance of my time.